Everything I 
Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Outer Wilds. We're going to play this for a little bit. Get into it. I will say I've already uh, played this, so this is just going through it again, but this is one of my favorite games. Uh, and trimming this is terrible. There's our pilot back from your pre-launch camp out under the stars, I see. So it's launch day, eh? Seems like only yesterday you joined the space program, and suddenly here you are, living on your first solo voyage. What do you say? Ready to get this beauty off the ground? It's all fueled up and ready to go. All systems go. Glad you're excited, but remember, if you wreck the ship, I'm not building you a new one. I'm not made of lightweight re-entry grade of aluminum alloys, you know. Anyway, I'll need to get the launch codes from Hornfels at the observatory before you can lift off. Just bring those here once you've said your goodbyes or whatever. Roast a marshmallow. I like my marshmallows nice and golden. There we go. Yummy. It has been a while. What's my guy? Hey, it's you. Slate said you're blasting off in your ship today. I'm really excited to see the launch. Aren't you going to go into space, aren't you? You better not have changed your mind. Uh, I want to practice with the pro before I leave. Oh, you're saying that. But if you really want to practice with me, I guess I could help you out a little. Try to land on one of those geyser pools. Show me what you've got. What a landing. I guess that's why Slate lets you find the real thing, huh? Yeah, I can do better.
Bye. Yeah. Hey, oh, Hatchling. I hear you're leaving us to seek adventure amongst the stars. When you return, let's you, me, and Gosan open up a bottle of the good stuff. I'm only seeking adventure amongst one star, actually. Other stars are too, too far away. It's less delicious set by a more daunting digestive challenge. And our stomach is a mark of truly hearthian, my friend. Our hardy hunter-gatherer lifestyle stems from trial and error. By which I mean our ancestors survived eating a lot of bad things. You're actually blasting off in that thing, huh? I'm told of my odds as well, statistically quite high. Yeah, the space program certainly come a long way. I should probably thank you for few causing fewer flash fires than your predecessors. By the way, good luck with those retro rockets. The pilot seat used by pirating astronaut Feldspar is all that remains of our inaugural flight into space. Although it's been argued such a distinction requires a breathtakingly liberal definition of flight, that day will nevertheless always be remembered as a landmark achievement in Hearthian history. So it's launch day, huh? How's going to miss you? Speaking of launch day, I was thinking about it, and that platform those ships launched from is getting gold. Isn't it about time you built a new, less flammable one? That big tree in the village would be the perfect choice. I wouldn't mind hopping out the speaker and just say the word. Launch plan is flammable? Ha, you didn't realize that? Don't worry, it's held up for all the launches so far. It'll definitely be fine for yours, probably. Hello there, Space Cadet. I hear you're living in the crater today. If you meet any of their travelers up there, we'll marry them and take care of their Christmas, proper care of their instruments, won't you? Uh, where's the observatory? It's questions like that that make us worry about you going up into space on your own, you know. The observatory is up the path behind the waterfall. There are a couple of signs parking the way, but really, you should just keep going up and then hook it right when you get the zero G cave. Uh, observatory. Hello, hello, astronaut. If it isn't my favorite trouble maker, we wanted to play hide and seek, but Moraine won't let us borrow their signal scope because it's really delicate and not supposed to be thrown around like that. Hey, hey can you use your signal scope? Can we? Can we please? We'll even let you be it. Sure, let's play. Woohoo! Okay, here are the rules Galena and me will hide with these radios, and you will use your signal scope to find us. Last one to be found wins. Okay, close your eyes and start counting. God, I love this game. Oh, you found me, but my hiding spot was super good. Don't forget, you get to find both of us, okay? Do 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 do
I won. I'm happy. Thanks for playing with us. Fishing rhyme, fishing rhyme, seeking helps me pass the time. You're leaving the crater? Guess we'll be a little busier without you drilling a hand. That big water planet, giant steep, that's where I'd go. Oh, well, why is that? One time, after the rest of the village had left to sleep and it was just the two of us sitting around the campfire, Gabro told me about their first trip to Giant's Deep. They landed their ship easily enough in the waves, but couldn't see too far down. On account of how murky the water was, I guess, too dark. Gabro wants to see what lay beneath the surface, so they decided to travel deeper. They traveled down and down, but suddenly, Gabro couldn't go any further. Tell me more. I will. I was just pausing dramatically. As though exercising a will of its own, the water was refusing to let Gabro go any deeper. It held Gabro back, almost as if it was trying to protect them from something. And then, in the terrible darkness, Gabro saw it. A tentacle of hideous beast. Ah! I mean, that's what Gabro said anyway. Well, whatever it was, it freaked Gabro up pretty good. Everyone wants to hear some new, new stories of those campfire, you know. Make sure you bring some back with you. Sure thing. I love this game. Hi, astronaut. We know the patch of ghost matter inside this fence. Ghost on said it used to be bigger when they were hatchling, because ghost matter evaporates. It just takes a super long time to go away. I hope there's still ghost matter in the village when I'm a grown up. Ghost matter is awesome. You know, ghost matter is how Tech Tight lost their foot, right? Whoa, really? That's so. It is so cool. Yeah, sure. Hmm. Oh, hello, astronaut. Uh, this is good weather for your launch, right? It's lucky. Any good sounds from space today? There are. My sound scope is set to the outer world adventures frequency, so I'm listening to the traveler's music. Last night, I heard Ryback's banjo coming from Biddle Hollow. I hope that means they're safe. I can hear different planets, too. It depends on what time of day or night it is. Some different planets are in the sky at different times. Signal scopes are cool. Yes, they are. I will be skipping the zero G cave. Hey, come say have your old flight coach before you launch. So we've got zero G training set up if you want a refresher. Nah, I already know. Outer Wilds Ventures Finding Members Clockwise from Top Left Hornfells, Ghost on Slate and Feldspar Outer Wild Ventures Timber Hearst first and only space program was founded to explore the farthest reaches of our solar system. Feldspar was the first Earthian to be intentionally launched into space. They completed the first orbit around Timber Hearth and later made the first of what would be many landings on our moon, the Adel Rock. Hey, hey, it's my favorite astronaut. Launch day at last, huh, buddy? It's the translator's tool inaugural flight, too. I'm so excited. It's making me nauseous. Just think, you'll be able to translate any nomad text you want, anywhere you are. The tool was put a lot of hours into inventing that to 
to inventing that tool, so don't break it, okay? <laughs> oh, jeez, do not break it. Ugh, ignore me, okay? I'm just nervous. I'm not even the one going to space. How are you feeling? Excited. Good, you've only been waiting for this day since you were hatchlings. I can't wait to see all your training pay off. So what's the dirt? You here to see the new Nomai statue? New statue? You haven't heard? Gavro brought it back with them from Giant's Deep. And Hornfell's just finished prepping it for display. This is it right here. Neat, huh? Makes me wish we could see what a real live Nomai looks like. But I guess this is as close as we'll ever get. Check it out. Looks like they had fur. Fur is weird. This is the first fully intact statue we, I bet we've ever found, you know? And for how old it is, it's in great shape. Ah, jeez, I got a little carried away there. Go on, you have a ship to launch. Take care of yourself out there, you hear? This remarkably intact statue was carved by the Nomai, an ancient species who dwelled in our solar system thousands of years ago. The statue provides us with our most detailed look yet at the Nomai, who appear to be have covered with a layer of fur. Note the decorative jewelry has been carved as part of the antlers. All of their artifacts and structures have been found on almost every planet in the solar system. We still have no idea where the species came from or what happened to them. Or what happened to them. <sighs> One of my favorite parts in this game. The museum. Observatory. This piece of Nomai writing was essential to deciphering their unique language. Although this text is linear, Nomai text often branches off from a central point. Interestingly, each branch, branch tends to be written by a different author. Kasava. Uh, oh yeah, I always took notes. Uh, should I take notes t again? That would be pretty interesting. Take some notes every now and then. I don't really have a notepad, though. Or, uh, something to write with. Well, I mean, I guess I do. Give me a moment. Uh, come here, notebook. You've been sitting up here for forever. Time to put some use to, to you. Uh. I wrote a bunch of stuff in this. And then in regards to making my own D&D &D world. But it never panned out. Got bored of it. This was for Scythian. Here we go. Ah, Ksava. We're nearly ready. Felix, Felix and I have finished construction and she says calibrating a device won't take long. So we also have Felix. Felix, unfortunately, the Adel Rock's lack of atmosphere will make calibration simple. After all, this time, I'm thrilled to finally resume our search. Aside from the dwellings and structures they built, the Nomai also made art. This decora decorated pottery was discovered on Brittle Hollow. Some ancient Nomai art depicts strange animals, foreign celestial objects, and other subjects that can't be found in our solar system. Which makes us wonder whether the Nomai originated somewhere in the universe or simply had vibrant imaginations. Were the Nomai born in our solar system or were they born among other stars and planets? And if they were, how and why did they come here? These are just some of the questions we hope to answer through further xenoarchaeological expeditions. What you see here are parts of the Nomai skeleton. We can tell from their skulls that they possess antlers and quite unusually only three eyes. The Nomai body was most likely adapted for living exclusively on land. 
The difference is the Nomai anatomy, such as their shockingly fragile bone structure, shows us that Harthians couldn't have descended from Nomayan ancestors. It's not clear where the Nomai originated from or why they disappeared. We hope to find more clues to this puzzle as we explore our solar system. The Nomai technology brought back from space uh, by our astronauts has been a great boon to Outer Wilds ventures, allowing us to modify expedition gear in exciting and unuseful ways. For example, the Little Scout now boosts a warp retrieval capability that allows astronauts to recall their scouts almost instantly. This has dramatically reduced the number of scouts lost in the depths of space. This crystal was taken from a Nomai ruin on Brittle Hollow. It seems to create a local gravity distortion and was most likely used to traverse steep surfaces. Try it out. Whee! Yep. Nice. Stars like our sun generate light and heat by fusing hydrogen into helium. As it grows older, the star runs out of hydrogen and starts to contract. As the star's core contracts, it gets hotter, causing the outer layer to expand. The star has become a red giant. When the core is hot enough, it starts to fuse helium into carbon. If a star is massive enough, it will continue to fuse carbon into even heavier elements, like iron. Uh, for, uh, ultimately, the star will collapse under its own gravity and then explode in a violent event called a supernova. Based on chart observations, this will one day be the fate of our own sun. Watch closely, these balls move on their own. The ground is perfectly level, so what do you think causes the spooky motion? The answer is the moon. As it orbits our planet, the outer rock's gravity pulls on objects from different directions. In fact, it's pulling on you right now. See how I'm slightly moving? Ah, oh, so good. Oh yeah, I almost forgot this guy. This anglerfish specimen was found a specimen was found attached to the landing gear of one of our ships that flew close to Dark Bramble. Uh, it appears well suited living in dark places with minimal atmosphere. I hate you. Yeah, one of my favorite ones. This strange the strange rock moving around the grotto appears to be right to conscious observation. Conscious observation. The level-headed among us realized there must be some sort of optical illusion at play, but Gabbro claims the rock exists in all possible states until it is observed, whatever that means. Whatever is actually happening, both sides of this debate agree the effect is extremely creepy. Yes. Haha. <laughs> That's so fun. This game is just fun. View map. Welcome to the solar system. I wonder. Oh, yep, it's gone. So viewing this is basically viewing it. I see. Ah, oh, love it. Uh, if you don't know, later. Oh. It's explained later. Hornfell's observations. This is incredible. At first, I thought the points of light in this image were stars, but they're not. They're galaxies. And this image covers just a tiny patch of the whole gas sky. The whole sky. Which means the universe contains at least a thousand times more galaxies than we previously imagined. I, I think this need to sit down. Hold on. Give me one moment.
Hmm, this is odd. According to my redshift calculations, every single galaxy in this image is moving away from us. In fact, the further away a galaxy is, the faster it appears to be moving away. It's almost as if the entire universe is expanding. But if that's true, was everything closer together in the past? And how far back can we extrapolate? Did the universe have a beginning? There you are. I just finished pre-flight observations. And local conditions are good. Time to get our newest astronaut off the ground. And it will be our first astronaut ever equipped with the NOMI translator tool. I confess, I have been giddy all day just thinking about it. We are better equipped than ever to unravel the mysteries of the NOMI. You and Hal should be very proud of your work. Tell me, what's your plan once you're in space? Uh, I'm gonna wing it. Planning to follow in the footsteps of Feldspar and the other great outer wild adventures tradition, are you? I might have guessed. Well, see if you can't put that translator tool of yours to good use while you're out there. Well then, looks like that's all that all that's left is to send you off. All in all, it's a fine day for launch. Uh, I'm ready to die in space. I'm not one for superstition, but isn't that kind of unlucky to say before a launch? At any rate, here are the launch codes. Try not to worry too much. Our ships are very, very bit uh, as our ships are every bit as safe as Slate could be persuaded to make them. Best of luck out there. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Thank you. Well, that happened. Hey, hey, so did you get a look at that no my statue? The statue uh the statue looked at me and opened its eyes. Whoa whoa, the statue was doing what? So its eyes open, and then you saw images from your own memories and glowing lights flying around? You mean like a hallucination? Listen, no offense, but... Uh, what was his voice? Uh, listen, no offense, but are you sure you're okay to launch? Like, medically speaking? Uh, you know what? Don't worry about it. Maybe you should sit down for a bit and take it easy. I'd hate for anything bad to happen to you if you tried to launch without while uh, you're not feeling great. F fuck that lineup. But hurry. When you are ready, then you can make the most of our translator tool. <laughs> I can't believe it's all grown up and leaving for space already. For real though, I'm glad you're the one carrying it and not like Ryback. They'd fall on it for sure. Say, if you want to do a short trip to just get your space legs under you, you could check out the ruins on the Idle Rock. I'd love to learn what those are. Good luck and safe flying. Oh, that's my next destination. I'm going to try to follow somewhat of an order. I felt like there was a reason to come down here, and I don't remember why. There was probably none. Yeah, this works.
this universe is impossibly small. Oh. Hello, Tefra. Hello, astronaut. Are you going into space today? Are you going into space and never come back like Feldspar did? Uh, don't worry. Don't worry, I'll come back. That's what Feldspar said too, but they never did. Hortfeld will be really sad if you don't come back. Like how sad it makes them to talk about Feldspar. So you should make sure you don't lose, get lost in space too. Alright. No loss in space for me. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Looks like you're ready to, for takeoff. The excitement of a launch is fun and all, but I can't wait to get back to working on the new ship. Working on fixing the autopods avoidance system for this one. Uh, sorry. Oh, great. Hello, ship. And off we go into space. I love space. There are trees on the moon. Yep. Oh, Esker. Oh, hey, it's you. Ground Control didn't tell me you were launching. Long time no see. Actually, I guess it's been a long time since I've seen anyone. Don't the other travelers come by? The Lunar Outposts saw more traffic back when our ships were less sophisticated and needed more frequent repairs. Nowadays, it's mostly used to keep a set of eyes on things. Sometimes, Chirk comes by to say hi, but Gabbro is Gabbro. And you know how Wybeck feels about unnecessary spaceflight? Don't go. Uh, I have anything else you wanted to ask? Uh, seems lonely up here. A little. I'm in touch with ground control, horn cells, and ghosts on mostly. As they ready you up to chat now and then. And when ground control forgets I'm up here, and they usually do, I launch my little scout at the village. Uh, they forget about you? I don't blame them. For one, I don't check in as often as the other travelers, since I'm always in one place. And it's not so bad up here, really. At least it's peaceful and quiet. You don't always get that in our solar system. Let alone in our village. Don't go! Oh, was that you whistling? Oh, probably. Or actually, definitely. The other travelers carry instruments, so they don't bother whistling. You can pick up their music with a cinoscope, you know. Best spot for that is the North Pole. Great reception. The North Pole is marked in red on your minimap, but the Adawak is a pretty small moon, really. Just go north, you can't miss it. Uh, what is this place? Ha <laughs> ha, very funny. Oh, stars above, you're serious, aren't you? That's just depressing. Uh, welcome to the Lunar Outpost, which apparently the space program doesn't bother to teach anyone anymore. When we first started Outer Wilds, travelers used to bring their ship here all the time for repairs. Our spacefaring technology has improved loads since then, but the older ships tended to uh, fall apart a lot. Like, more than they do now. Using the outpost cut down the number of launches and landings taking place in the village, and also the number of fires. Nowadays, though, it's mostly just me up here, raising saplings from Timber Hearth, and keeping an eye on things. Uh, talk to you later.
All right, let's take a look here. Esker signal scope log. Day 48. Still not picking up Ryback's banjo from Brittle Hollow. I'm sure they're fine, but I'll feel better once I hear their music. Day 51. Listen to Chirp play for a while today. Unrelated, someone should tell Porphy and Ghost on their flirting is not settled from an aerial perspective. Day 55. Banjo music coming in loud and clear today. Sounds like Ryback's doing okay. That oaf I was worried. Day 63. Today I thought I heard something strange. I don't know. It was probably nothing. Day 70. No, it's back again today. Two. Something strange is coming from Timber Hearth. Day 76. Okay, I know this is crazy, but the sound from Timber Hearth sounds exactly like Feldspar's harmonica. But Feldspar disappeared in space ages ago. It can't be them. Day 88. It's still here. This is creepy. Maybe my signal scope is broken. I'd better talk to Ness. Something's at the North Pole. Dark Bramble. Uh, Giant's Deep. Brittle Hollow. Whitehall Station. Uh, that is... The Intervener or something? I forget. Hello. Uh, the sun station. The interloper, that's what it is. Hi, hi. Flag. Yeah. This must be the first ship that crashed. And here we have some no my ruins. Oxygen. Coleus. I was upstairs testing the eye signal locator and I can hear and follow the signals from the sun, Giant's Deep and Brittle Hollow. Uh, however, something strange is happening when I ask the eye signal locator to follow the eye signal. The device's indicator indicate rotates widely and never points to just one direction. Thatch. Writing it down. This is a curious result. It's possible the eye has stopped calling out a signal. Felix. I see. I most likely calibrated the locator incorrectly. Privet, my apprentice, and I will make adjustments. Privet. Uh... Apprentice to Felix. Felix. Uh. Uh. No. Add a rock locator. An update. Disappointingly, everything is correctly calibrated after all. 
cassava. It saddens me to post this, uh, pause at this, my friends, but I believe we need to build a more sophisticated device if we want to find the uh, exact location of the eye of the universe. Thatch, then we will build it. Don't lose hope, Kasava. Our search for the eye is what brought our clan to this place. We won't give up so easily. Ah, oxygen. Uh, for this, because I am doing... For translator, I will enable it. Thatch, where should we... Should this new, more sophisticated locator be built? It may need to be larger than this eye signal locator. Is Plume, the southern glacier on Biddle Hollow has ample available space. I could construct a new building to house this proposed locator. So we have Plume now. Uh, suggesting to build uh, an observatory. Yes, let's build there. I imagine our young friend Kanoi would enjoy this immensely. He's always held a great interest in the eye, especially for a child born so long after the crash. Kanoi. Offspring. Uh, anything with a jar in my notebook. After the crash. I'll begin construction on Biddle Hollow's South Pole immediately, then. Uh... Observatory. Coleus. Okay. Uh, Nona and those of us originally stranded on the Ember Twin built a quantum moon locator. Let's see. Uh, Nona. Uh, the Ember... Well... And though and those of us originally stranded on the Amber Twin built a quantum moon locator there, but the heat of the sun made its construction challenging. I wouldn't recommend building on that planet. Uh constructed uh Okay. Oh, wow. Wow, I've never seen this rune in other travelers' pictures, but seeing it for myself, it's really old, isn't it? But wow, this is the coolest day of my life. Okay, um, time for some official notes. So this is some kind of Nomai locator. It can point out the different planets, which is incredibly cool, by the way. But from what little I could uh, can understand of the writing here, I think it was built to try to find something specific. I'm not sure. I also was able to translate something about the South Pole of Brittle Hollow, so I'll fly there to see if I can learn more. Yep, just gonna get back in the old ship and take off. Totally safe. Mostly safe. Oh, stars above. Alright, that sun is looking red. Uh, 
Let's see. Bridal Hollow. Ah, there you are. Giant's Deep. I love how you can hear the sounds through it. The sun. Unfortunately, it's not going to find anything. You could just listen to the sun. Oh, where did I leave my ship? Recording. Chert's research notes. Property of Chert. This is an old crater. The neat thing here is that the composition of the sample site took from the impact site matches the composition of the ice on the outskirts of Dark Bramble. I posit the Edel Rock was hit with a piece of the planet that used to be where Dark Bramble Lyle lies. To follow up on, maybe there are more fragments of the old planet Dark Bramble destroyed on another astral body in the solar system. Refueling. Ooh. Well, let's go check this out, I suppose. Hey, oh hatchling, I thought you were taking that tin can of yours into space today. What are you still doing here? Me? I saw something crash over the horizon and didn't like what I was seeing in the pictures my little scout was sending back. So I thought I'd come over here myself and take a look. Uh, is that a dark bramble seed? You think so? Uh, it's nothing I've ever seen on Timber Hearth before, so you could probably haunt it something there. Whatever it is, it, it's put down roots in a hurry. I don't like the look of this thing, hatchling, and that's a fact. I think I'll set Marl and Hal loose on it. Best get rid of this mess sooner rather than later, and no one can unremove an unwanted plant faster than a tree keeper can. I'll have to get a look on what's inside the seed first, though. Don't want to set anybody on to uh, hacking up a potentially dangerous plant without a better idea of what's lurking inside there. Tough can help me haul the old scout launcher over here. Obviously, the opening is too small for someone to fit inside, and anyway, I'm not going to blindly stick my hands into anything that looks uh, as unpleasant as that seed does. That's a good way to lose an arm or two. Yeah, but I have one. Uh, that's right. I see teeth of white and scary looking uh, trees. Alright, let's go. Oh, 
I guess we can continue exploring home planet. God, I wish I could travel like this. Just love the music in this game. Church research from Property Church. If you hear a strange thing from somewhere within the grove in this crater, it's very similar to the signal emitted by the quantum moon, so it stands to reason the two signals are probably related. We don't know much about the quantum moon, seeing as no one's ever been able to land on it, but hopefully, sending the signal in the grove will reveal more about it. I'll do it later. Uh, this is this would be absolutely terrifying in real life yeah, It will happen it will happen someday Take me Hey, you ready to get this thing off the ground? Ship's all fueled and ready to go. Uh, did, did I just die? Whoa, bad dream or something? You still look half asleep. Well, that's a negative on being deceased. I know it's tradition to sleep out under the stars the night before launch, but if you ask me, it makes you all a bit jumpy. Uh, if you have any goodbyes to say, but the same now. Oh, I guess I said I have to change your room. Not saying you have to, but uh, I'd help go on off the way back if you did. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Oh, hold up. You're going to want to get the launch codes from the observatory first. Uh. Wait, did I just die or. Uh, no, you have a bad dream or something? I won't ask you how you got the code, so hurry up and lock before Hornsfeld decides to ground you for medical reasons. I want to see whether the new cockpit stays attached during liftoff. Alright, let's go exploring. The world is my... Uh, celestial oyster. Yeah, but first... Ah, oh, jeez. I think I hit the, uh, satellite. Oh, it's gotta be somewhere around here. Here's this. I guess we can explore this, then.
Ooh, big tree. I forgot was there anything else noteworthy. I do believe there wasn't. Whoops. I didn't realize there was a ghost mounder there. See, I know what I'm doing. <gasps> ah. I'll try this again. That's the North Pole. I need to go to the South Pole. Oh, is this it? I think this is it. Yeah. It's always dark in the ancient glade, the quiet shade across the park. Quantum fluctuations. Ah, oh, hello tree. Let's go down here. Oh, whoop. Oh, there's something down there, but I can't do it from here, I guess. Oh, well. the quiet shades always dark across all the bargaining and shingled. Observatory over there. Let's head this way. I'm an awesome pilot. 
I make park great. Mining site Troopy. I always like to take snapshots of dead bodies. Oh, and oh. I'm still amazed by how much ore the Ash Twin project requires. Isn't this the ore for the remaining towers being built on Ash Twin? The completed towers I've seen are quite large. Oh, Psycad. Oh, I know. No, the material for those towers is all being taken from Ash Twin. The old wire mining here will be used to craft an immensely thick protective shell that will physically seal off the chamber inside Ash Twin's core. Coleus, I'm relieved by our clan's decision to use timber hearse ore only for constructing this shell. If eventually life on this planet were to evolve to the point of advanced metallurgy, I'm confident we won't have destroyed their ability to create. Psychat, if they're sealing off all entrances, I hope they've planned accordingly. I thought you had forbidden your apprentice from making puns, Coleus. Ooh. I believe the apprentices are offsprings. AP. Apprentice to Coleus. How else would he improve? And the material is almost like stars. Yaro, my gratitude for the latest shipment. Oh, I know. This ore should be the last we'll need for the Ash Twin project. Yaro. Uh, this is exciting news. Can I offer an extra set of eyes for this final check? Specifically mine. If my work here is complete, I'd be delighted to help. I'd be grateful if you would. The more eyes, the better. As the smallest flaw or opening in the shell that protects the Ashman project could lead to disaster. Once we finish the shell that seals out the central chamber, we'll check the in to ensure there are no longer any physical entrances. Raimi and I will be checking the interior and then the exterior for cracks, our final safety check. So now we have uh, Raimi. Or... I suppose we could make an assumption that uh, this is Oweno and Psycad. Because the scrolls indicate they were here during the time of writing. While well, blue indicate that they were writing from this side.
Uh, we'll keep that as a possibility. Uh, I'll do this. Oh, well. So, Oeno's possible death. Could be here. What's up, Cyclone? Tree. Uh, I'm playing, uh, Outer Wilds. Very pretty in here. That's because I'm in a cave. You just got here. So we have I I, I want I'm taking notes too. Because I always wanted to take notes on this. So we have one by a collection of ore and an ore elevator. We have Two over here. Uh, sitting by table near, uh, what is a projector? Uh, one by wall near uh 
translated. Uh, no. Wall phone, I guess. Don't know what to call it, really. How are you today, Cyclone? Uh, one at bottom of ramp of entrance. Which means there are a total of four bodies in this mining site. I love playing detective. We're not done yet. We're diving down. We. This is when they found us. Have you played this before, Cyclo? Coleus. After closer observation, mining site 2A would be safe for the native life dwelling in some of this cave's pools. So, unfortunately, we'll have to mine one of the other sites. There are a few other cave sites that look promising. What about site 2B? It share similar formations and strata. Uh. Coleus. Uh. Syed. Huh, gotta go back. Uh, Oeno. Uh, Saya, Saikan. Site 2B is safe. Kulia says we'll continue to monitor our activity and its effects on life here. Uh, on the opposite hand, new life. This species is semi aquatic and very hardy. The ecosystem here is quite robust. I believe they'll thrive in the long run. Be cautious near the pools if you visit 2A to meet them. They remind me uh, of a Sotranian species that my mentor, Melore, once told me about. Or when our kind used to travel across this universe. I imagine she would have enjoyed these life forms greatly. Melore. I believe that was it. That's all I needed in here. No, my ship! Is my mic on? Cyclone, are you there? Can you hear me? Hello. Tap, tap, tap. Well, my mic seems to be going up and down. Oh, you're <laughs> all right. Welcome back. I was asking if you had uh, heard me because I wasn't sure if my mic was working or not. Uh, let's see. Let's go to Brittle Hollow. No, it's pretty late. Let's uh, let's go here.
Oh god, too fast. Are you, is the music and stuff too loud? Okay. So Cyclone, have you played this before? Whoa! Whoa! Whoop! Uh, there we go. You haven't? Oh, I really recommend it. Or oh, just watch me play it. <laughs> hey, Gabro. Nice, it's you. Good to see you made it here in one piece. The first solo launch is a doozy, isn't it? So hey, don't freak out or anything, but lately I keep, like, dying repeatedly. I don't know, it's pretty weird. What about you? Have you died lately, or is it just me? Nope, it's me too. We're in a time loop. Time has been behaving unusually lately. Yeah, time loop makes sense. Cool. You're taking this pretty well. Heh, <laughs> right back at you. Personally, I like new experiences. I've never been in a time loop before. I mean, I don't think I've been in a time loop before this one. It looks like you and I are the only ones who could tell that time's gone all weird. I tried radioing horn cells and asking if they'd die too, but they thought I was being metaphorical. Even if I tell horn cells about the time loop, they never remember about the next one. They don't realize anything's different. And here's another weird one for you. Every time I die, all of my memories from that loop replay back to me. I'm pretty sure that's related to this big stone no my statue I found on one of the other islands. Yep, this game can be completed in nine minutes. Uh, I found on one of the other islands. I was looking at it, and the statue opened its eyes and started glowing. It replayed my memories like it seen through them through my own eyes. Just like what happens each time I die. Oh, well, this is... This isn't good. Uh... There you go. Where are we? Have you ever watched a cyclone for so long it started to hypnotize you? I'm telling you, they'll put you in a trance if you stare at them long enough. Uh... I guess we're just done with that conversation. Alright then. I found something. I found your quantum poem. Yeah, the one in the woods. I remember writing that. Pretty fun, right? It works out to a good 24 poems. When I'm done exploring, I want to make some more quantum art. Maybe some kind of creature sculpture that just like shows up and scares the daylights out of you thanks you're helpful the gravity is so high I doze off I really shouldn't. <laughs> How do you like Air Marshmallow Cyclone? <laughs> oh, 
purple. I like my nice and brown, uh, nice and golden. I can't stand marshmallows that are just completely burnt. I don't see how people can. I love the music for this game too. Cassava. Do I have cassava? Yes, I do. This is it. We've finished building the final Orbital Pro Cannon module and are ready to send it into orbit around Kyrian's Deep for assembly. Uh, this is... Uh, giant Steep. And this is the... Okay, back to WoW, the card game. Oh, you mean, uh, Stone Earth? You don't have to watch. I'm just doing this for fun. Well, I appreciate you watching. Thank you. Um... Ryan Van Helsing, thank you for following. Sorry, I was taking notes. Uh, let's see. I might have to come back. Uh, let's see. Nope, this one. Uh, so our next step will be to send Privet up to the Orbital Probe Cannon to install the probe tracking system. To all my friends here at the construction yard, my gratitude for your tireless work. I had given up hope, but I truly believe this cannon may actually succeed where many other attempts have not. Daz, are you going gelatinous on us, love? I'm delighted by your words, but there are eight typical for you. Shall we have Daz? Uh, I need a new page. If I'm ever half as ghouly as Mallow and Avens behave together, uh, Dad, you may launch me from the Orbital Pro Cannon. Mallow and Avens. So Mallow and Evans? Maybe.
Well, where was I? Daz, if I know my brother, did I get Daz already? Yeah. Avens and his spouse will want to launch the probe with as much power as possible. Daz and Avens are brothers. I love doing detective work. Hey, don't be attacking me. Also, thank you for joining me, Ryan. Ryan Van Helsing. Uh, I'm worried the cannon would break under the strain. I propose we give Avent and Mallow a slightly lower maximum power setting than the absolute maximum possible to create room for their enthusiasm. Mm. Uh, so we have uh, let's see Sorry, I'm taking notes on where the bodies are found. I wrote two bodies sticking out to the water near the wall phone, one sitting by a wall phone with cortex nearby. Uh, I guess that's not really a wall phone, it's a communication board. I don't know what their actual term is. I forget. So we have these bodies. We have one here. Nice. You got you got five uh, coins. One on wall walkway. I would usually do this with the notepad in uh, Viscera Cleanup Detail. It's like I'm playing detective. Probe control module. Kasaba, I have bad news, Evans. Yara says there was a problem with a proposed power source, so the o orbital probe cannon won't be asked to fire. I hope you're pulling my locomotive limb here at Kasaba. I wish I were, my friend, but no, they aren't certain they can fix the problem, so the orbital probe cannon is on indefinite hiatus. Tell Privet and Mallow they should return from the cannon. My spouse and I will remain at the construction yard for now. Kasaba had a spouse. I'm looking at the minor details. Uh, let's see. Had a spouse. Possible spouse. I haven't seen anything in regards to Kasaba. Pr 
Privet and Mallow. Privet. Nice boss and I will remain at the construction yard for now. An update. Mallow and I will join you and Daz. Maybe it's Daz. Daz is probably partners with Kasaba. I feel like that's correct. Partners with because they're joining them. Uh, Pruitt left to visit her brother. She fears Aida may feel responsible. So Pruitt's brother. Oh yeah, that's right. Daz said that Avans is their brother, so Avans is a boy. Nope, oh, that's a female symbol. I need a male symbol. Wait, which one's the female or male symbol? The male symbol's pointing down, isn't it? Well, the female sensor uh, symbol is the one pointing to the side. Yeah, I think that's right. Oh, great. Now I have to check. Yeah, okay. Sorry. I, I played this game already, but this time I'm going through and taking notes. Uh, and... Uh, this one. No. Permit left to visit her... That doesn't sound good. Uh, left to visit her brother. She fears Aida may feel worse. Her brother. So we know Privet is a female. Is it the other way around? Down girl, up boy. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, we have uh, idea. This is an in-depth look at this game right here. And idea is a boy. Okay, that seems pretty decent. Oh. Space got thrown into the atmosphere. So far, I got a bunch of information. Uh-oh. 20 minutes, 55 seconds ago, long-range probe successfully launched from the orbital probe cannon. Whoa. Oh no, I'm being left behind. Underwater. Quickly. I'm not going to make it. I don't remember if there's dead bodies over here. I've gotten the information from this area. Maybe not. Uh, okay. I'll have to come back anyway, but, uh, this is one at table. 
with com tab uh to brittle hollow I believe that is all them bodies. So, so far, there should be a total of two, three, four, five. Five bodies at the construction site. I love how it just gets dark. And it suddenly lights back up. Before you're burned into a hellfire. How are you enjoying it so far, Ryan? Have you seen this game before? Is it? If you don't, if you don't know what's happening, the sun exploded. The sun went supernova. Also, this is what we look like. Yeah, the sun is going to go supernova, by the way. Oh yeah, the observatory has an exhibit about that. Between you and me, I can also over some of the finer details. Astrophysics is really more Hornfeld's domain. Me, I'm here for the rocket science and the marshmallows. You get to fly in around in a cool ship and... Oh yeah, uh, which I should mention. The ship is made from metal and wood. Like literal wood planks. Super Cyclone, Cyclona. You know what? I can't be certain. So yeah, we'll have to return to uh, where is it? Where is... Oh, there you are. Autopilot, engage. I gotta look over my notes. I love the music with this too. Yeah, uh, anyway, I'm playing this. Uh, I know you guys didn't ask, but uh, I've been playing too much Rust. So I decided I wanted to play one of my favorite games. And to the Gas Giant which has water as its base. I uh, hope you're not afraid of jellyfish or uh, deep oceans or black holes. Or cyclones, I guess. Hey, cyclones, you. What's up, cyclone? Let me get in yet for a second. Oh, thank you for shoving me out into space, Cyclone. Very kind of you. Whoa. It's not a very pretty Cyclone, is it? Why you gotta attack me? What's wrong with you? Ghost matter. In case 
uh, you don't know, ghost matter is a substance that can kill you instantly if you walked into it. And it's invisible to the naked eye. It can only be seen by cameras. So it's kind of like really intense radiation. Except with, it's not a Gaia counter, you're kind of screwed. They also make these little crystals everywhere. It's said to be extreme cold. Trip four, entry number whatever, crashes two, boring crashes zero. Uh, so d yeah, it's basically death stranding. Uh, well, where their rain kind of reverses time. Eh, yeah, that's about. Uh, just no invisible creatures. Uh, when I get back, haha, <laughs> yeah, yeah, all the way down to the core. Consider yourself conquered, Giant Steve. You just got feldsparred. That was one of my many, that was one of my more dramatic feats, if I do say so myself. Can't believe I wasn't electrocuted. Ha! Ah, can't wait to tell Hornfels and Ghostson about this one. I guess brute force isn't always the answer. Right, so that's one more off the list. Seems all that's left is the big one now. Dark Bramble, here I come. These jellyfish are kind of cool. That is a cool effect, too. Alright, uh, we gotta find the island we need to find. Cyclones! Ah, here it is. What do you mean? It's an island of your people, Cyclone. What do you mean, no? Oh, I missed two bodies. Um, two, uh, steer. Near. Uh, one sitting, one on four. Sorry. Okay. I did miss some. So there are actually seven bodies here. I don't think I... <coughs> Ew, excuse me. Sorry about that. I tried to cover my mic. Thank you. Sorry if it blew out anyone's eardrums. That was un unintentional. You don't have any ear. Well, yeah, you're a cyclone. 
Oh, Dad ate them? Oh, that's disappointing. It would suck if I just tripped and dropped this into the abyss. <laughs> uh, just a thought crossing my mind. <laughs> All right, where was I? Uh, Kanoi, Daz, and I were lifting orbital probe cannon components into orbit for assembly, and one somehow sank down beneath the current. Uh, so we have Kanoi, Daz, and Kasaba. <sighs> Uh, Daz, Kasaba convinced me not to try to recreate the phenomenon myself using other cannon parts. Uh, but we're very curious to know what happened. How could something pass through the current? Kanoi. Uh, huh. Oh, Kanoi. So this is the person they're responding to. Daz and I. Okay. My gratitude for your interesting question. This is exciting. Spire constructed a model of giant sea parrot brittle hollow solar observatory. And it reveals how an object might sink below the current. So we have a new one. Uh, spire. I don't have a spire yet. Uh... See. Created. Uh, I don't really think. Uh, I don't have to put in what they were doing. This is just relationship stuff. Uh, anyway. Uh, Kanoi, I'm, uh, I'm unable to grasp the answer by looking through the projection pool. If I visit the observatory, would you kindly explain? If you don't mind the trick beneath the surface to the South Pole, I'd be delighted to see you. The trial head starts at the Brittle Hollows Equator. Uh, this is back beforehand. Kanoa, you should have seen it. We thought it was impossible for any cannon components to sink even partially below the current. But ours sank straight to the core. Right. Eight minutes, 18 seconds ago. Long-range probe successfully launched from the orbital probe cannon. All right, we're done here. So if you're confused on what's going on so far, allow me to uh, explain. Uh, basically, there is a race of goat people with three eyes called the Nomai. Uh, and the whole point of the game is to find out how they died because <laughs> Cyclone! No, that's a different game! Uh, but the whole point is to uh, find out how they died because they died compared to your race like a millennia ago. Hundreds of thousands of years ago. So, they... Your people ended up creating a device able to translate Nomai, the uh, the civilization's uh, text, which they communicate through spirals, which is what I was reading before. Uh, like this. Statue Workshop. So you go around with a translator tool to figure out why uh, the race had died out. But at the same time, you're also trying to figure out why your sun is exploding. Because you find out your sun explodes. Alright, more notes to take. Uh, we have... Uh, Statue Island. Uh, 
All right, we have one body here. Sorry, give me just one moment. Uh, we have by entrance on cliff. Okay. So we have one there. Lobby. Nope, oh, I had to correct the hard side. They're going to test the memory statues tonight. Flock says it could be dangerous, so we can't come. I don't think I have Flock shot here. But what if we don't didn't use the door and snuck in the other way? Does anyone want to? Uh, lady. Uh, I really want to see the test too, Lami, but that's a huge risk to take. We probably shouldn't. Maybe Flox will let us see us the later test. Tag it. Flox specifically told us not to do that. Take a look around, see if I can't find a body. Uh, we got some children's bones. So we have... Three in broken... Building. That's good enough. I used to look smaller. I don't see any others. Body found. Emergency meeting. God, I would love to play some Among Us. Flox, welcome to Giant's Deep, friends. I'm excited for you to meet the statues. If I'm not in my dwelling, I'm likely in my workshop below inside the island. All right, so now what I need to do is go for a dip. There we go.
door opens. So Flux is a maker. Oh. Hold on. Guess who's back, 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 got a little friend, friend, friend. Uh, Flux, I'm curious, is sending out a being s uh, I don't know if I should read this yet. Yeah, sure. I'm curious, is sending a being's memories back in time the same as sending the being itself back in time? As an example, if we were to send my memories back in time, is that the same as sending me back in time? Not my physical body, but my essence? I imagine there are two different actions. Wouldn't both actions be effectively the same? Suppose that time was being rewritten. I believe this is different than receiving memories from what is effectively the future. But isn't the end result identical in either case? It's a good thing to think about. If you send your memories back and you're basically receiving information from the future, are you going back in time? I, know, I think we can assume this is Flox, so we know how he died. One, on, unbuilt. Statue. Oh yeah, this game is, this game caused me to have PTSD of for life. Of life. <laughs> so we can guess that this is Flux because he made the statues uh, and Flux uh, Flux's death statue I went so these are the statues as a quick uh because you haven't seen the opening uh they bring a statue the same kind of statue as i'm looking at uh to the uh, observatory on uh timber hearth the place with all the trees um, the place where I wake up and it captured my memories allowing me to go back in time which is the philosophical question if you send your uh, memories back in time are you going back in time uh, we haven't found information on how that's done though uh, let's see uh, Yaro would you kindly step back so Daz is closest to the statue when pairing, the statue will choose whoever is in closest proximity. Uh, I believe it's four. Yes. Uh, see how its eyes have opened? That tells us the statue has paired with Daz. Now, no matter where he is in the star system, Daz's statue will record his memories and send them to the Ash Twins twin project. Daz is a male. Yaro, this is extraordinarily extraordinary sculpting work, Flox. He has outdone himself again, hasn't he? And now that we have our first successful parry, we can test my memory storage prototype. Each statue will send a single Nomai's memories to his or her own storage unit with an Ash Twin. Each storage unit will be equipped with a mask, the statue's counterpart, which will be able to send those stored memories back to the corresponding Nomai. Uh, if you want an example, it's this. No my statue mask, no my. Ash Twins Project. 
Raimi. Oh, new name. Nope, I already have that one. I've installed the mask inside the Ash Twin project flocks. They look beautiful, although I do feel as though I'm being observed. Uh, so Flax probably did the same thing with the masks. It's comforting to know the statues will not pair until the project succeeds. Otherwise, I imagine the experience would be hard to endure. Ideally, they'll only need to activate once the project succeeds. As a safety measure, however, the statues will also activate in the event of equipment failure. They will? Why is that? If anything goes wrong with the Ash Twin project, the statues and their masks will make us aware of the situation and enable us to fix it. Otherwise, it would be, it would be possible for us to remain permanently unaware of the problem. Uh, Raimi, I hadn't thought of that. What a profoundly horrific fate that would be. So basically, stuck in a forever time loop. On the projection stone. So these are the masks. Uh, and that's it. That's all that's here. Deja vu. Deja vu. Oh god, I didn't make it. What's up, Major? I see you in the chat. Alright. I am done here for now. Next stop, Brittle Hollow. How's this sun looking? Ooh, nice and red. Oh wait, no. Our next stop is here. It's Outer Wilds. Hmm. We tried a velocity match. Hopefully I have enough time to run through here. Go. So we have the pro tracking module, the troll module. Oh, oh come on. Uh, something. I don't know. Go here first. Ooh, the music. All right, so let's read this real quick while we have time. Evans, Mellow, my better 50%. Kasava is sending the last of the cannon components. Soon, relatively speaking. <laughs> we'll know the eye's precise location. Kasava tells me he and the construction yard crew have determined a power setting where are not under any circumstances to go above. The thought of concluding our elders' curious and challenging search increases my heart's temperature, my love. 
Uh, so Mallow and Ava is our offspring. They're not originals. Uh, Mal I see, and am I right to think that consequently we were ignoring that setting? Uh, I can posit with nearly 100% certainty our friends have accounted for our nature, so I do suggest we do. Giving the orbital probe cannon all the power it can structurally withstand creates the greatest chance of finding the eye of the universe. Yes, the probe must travel as fast as it can, as far as it can. It'll all make some adjustments. Yeah, the whole goal for the uh, beings known as the Nomai is to find the Eye of the Universe. More on that later. If you want to know what uh, the Eye of the Universe is, you'll have to stick around. Eighteen minutes, nineteen seconds ago. Request a launch probe received from Ash Twin Project. That right there is the Ash Twin Project. That's the probe cannon. Cannon aligned with randomly selected probe trajectory. Gravity field activated. So the probe... Basically, it was fired so hard and so fast, it broke the cannon apart. Begin launch log, orbital probe cannon, launch request received, probe launch successful. Probe tracking module is receiving data from probe. Warning, orbital probe cannon structure compromised during launch. Damage to multiple modules detected. Orbital probe cannon damage report. Severe structural stress detected. Assessing damage to modules. Control module intact. No structural damage. Launch module viewport window fractured. Module exposed to vacuum of space. Probe tracking module missing. So the one thing I need in order to track that module, uh, to track that probe, has gone missing. Shut up about my fuel. Ah, here we go. Oh, this ain't good. I'm about to run out of fuel. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> okay, I'm using mono propellant. No, I didn't want to go back in. Yeah, let me up. Uh, it was this one, perhaps? No. That one's broken, so it's this one. Also, that music means the sun's about to explode. Ooh. I should have time to read this. 
Mal, imagine, Privet, the probe tracking module will be the first to know the coordinates of the eye of the universe. You'll be the first to see them. I am honored and terrified. You won't ask the orbital probe can to use so much power that it breaks, will you? Fret not, my nervous friend. We only need to fire the probe once anyway, so who minds if it compromises the orbital probe cannons for structural integrity slightly? I would mind, Mallow. I would mind, because if we won't be capable of receiving our probe's data if the probe tracking module is destroyed. Oh, you guys should have thought about that. There's nothing here. The sun explodes. Everything goes dark. And then bright again. No, oh, I'm following. That doesn't matter. <laughs> there we go. Mask. It all makes sense now. If you're wondering how something like this is possible, the one of the things makes mention that the stone from uh, Giant's Deep actually has a memory effect. And they use that in order to send memories. Also, that's the probe there. I can't chase it. Yep, it's like a time loop. It's Groundhog Day. It's a death loop. Happy death day? No! So the probe cannon module, uh, the probe coordinates center is missing. Uh, I don't feel like traveling back. <laughs> That's kind of fucked up. <laughs> Just think about it, just suffocating in the vacuum of space is kind of fucked up. Quick death, though. I love that when you run out of breath in places, you wake up gasping for air. Ah, oh, just little details like that. Tarkov? What about Tarkov? Uh, to get out of it, uh, kind of, yeah, that would be the goal. Uh, basically, you want to find out why your son's exploding. <sighs> Escape from Tarkov is, uh, I haven't played it, but I own it, but it's something I don't have, really have an interest in. It's weird. Lag, please. I love this planet. So we have an escape pod. From who? You guessed it, the Nomai. Oh, 
Also, the uh, this planet's moon is a volcano that likes to shoot volcanic rock. Thatch. Uh, I have that. Is everyone unharmed? Plume. That's a new one. I believe. Nope, I have that. Uh, I don't know. It just doesn't interest me. No one was badly injured from the escape pod's impact. We're incredibly fortunate. This is good news, at least. We have, have we heard from escape pod 2 or escape pod 3? Felix. Um, I do have Felix. No, I, I'm unable to make contact. My equipment can hear the other two escape pods to stress signals, however. If it's any comfort, both pods must be structurally intact. I'll continue calling for them. My gratitude. If we can... Thatch, the moon is approaching again. Everyone brace yourselves. Swiftly, the volcanic moon has returned. Be cautious of falling ash and debris. I believe the moon has passed. This planet doesn't appear eager to have guests. We are currently unwelcome on its surface. We need to find shelter, and quickly. The volcanic moon won't go be gone for long. I observed several promising sites below the surface, but we'll need to construct a way for everyone to climb safely down this cliff. Perhaps we could build platforms. In we go. So they basically load themselves into little pods that would circle around. Which is cool. Begin flight log. Escape pod 1. Vessel has been mortally injured. Emergency sequence activated. Awaiting departure for vessel. Launching escape pod 3. Launching escape pod 2. Now launching escape pod 1. Alert. Collision imminent. Preparing for impact. Scanning external environment. Scan complete. Minor structural instabilities detected. Pockets of breathable air detected. Adequate solar energy detected. Verdict hospitable. Uh, emergency escape patch. Nope. Nope. There we go. Oh. In case you're wondering. Nope, I didn't make it. Ouch. That is a black hole. I'm going to try to avoid falling into it. Ooh. I hear banjo music. Try back. Oh, you launched. That's great. Great job, you. Oh, I guess that means I've been out here for a while, huh? Well, um, this is Brittle Hollow, but you probably knew that. A lot of history here. It's great. What are you doing here? I'm here to see the Hanging City. It's always been my dream to see it with my own four eyes, ever since I was a hatchling. An alien race lived in the solar system long before our species even existed. How could I not want to see what their civilization was like? Only... You've probably heard the others say it, right? I'm afraid of space. Seriously, I'm more surprised than anyone that I'm out here. Do you want to know how I even got this far? I fell, tripped over a gravity crystal. It's dumb luck I landed somewhere my little scout says it's halfway stable, instead of being sucked into what's below. I've been gauging the stability of the ground around me using my little scout, and this seems to be the place with the best surface integrity. So I'm just going to stay here until I'm ready to move on. Congratulations, Cyclone. You win. But that's enough about me and my problems. You didn't come all this way to listen to me blather, did you? Ha! Huh, that'd be... Yeah. Uh, I learned something. Oh, cool. Uh, what is it? I found the Nomai escape pod on Brittle Hollow. Wow, so then... Uh, the Nomai probably came here from somewhere outside the solar system. And they must have been in trouble when they lost their escape pod. What kind of trouble? 
And where did the escape pod launch from? I'm so curious. This is an amazing discovery. I hope we can find out more about how and you know, why the Nomai arrived here. Uh, I really don't really care about talking to you. That might be mean, but sure. Tower of Quantum Knowledge. Woo! Well, this is a great quantum knowledge leap. Bells. Ah, uh, let's see. Be welcomed in this place. Above you stands the Tower of Quantum Knowledge. If you are making your first pilgrimage to the quantum moon, ascend these stairs and obtain the last of the knowledge you need for your journey. Well, I don't have any foreground of the knowledge to my journey, so uh, I'll come back to you. If you type bet, uh, the amount you want to bet, and then do like a roulette table. Yeah. So you bet 420 on red. Uh, oh yeah, I can get to the surface. Going this way. That was close. Sweet, you win! Bells, beneath your feet lies the Tower of Quantum Knowledge. If you are preparing to make your first pilgrimage to the Quantum Moon, Descend the steps to the entrance below. The knowledge held within will help you on your journey. The trees are moving. The trees in this grove wander about freely. The entire planet, roots and all. This is not normal. Even for this alien planet, I have never see them move. Is that even possible? If anyone else witnesses this disturbing behavior, I implore you, record your observations here. Either these trees are aberrant, or my brain must be. Plume is right. The trees do move. I confess I didn't notice until I read these his notes. Alarmingly, it isn't only the trees. There is other matter in this area, such as the unusual shard of rock moving in the same eerie way. That rock is unusual for another reason. Too, Thatch. It possesses color and texture I've never seen elsewhere on this planet. Hypothesis. Those, this rock shard's presence is significant. We should study it. Could it be what is causing other nearby objects to also move about this area? If you're wondering what rock they're talking about, it's this one. Watch closely. It's gone. Instead, it's over here now. And it's gone. It's... Over there. Plume, Felix, and I have determined this atypical shard of rock is the reason objects in this grove are behaving in a quantum manner. That is kind of scary. <laughs> no, it's just that they are uh, quantum, meaning that they are uh, everywhere and nowhere at the same time until observed. So they can be anywhere in a specific area. The only other object we've observed displaying this quantum behavior is the wandering moon. I imagine that moon's behavior and this groves, groves are related. In her note from earlier, Felix mentions the strange type of rock isn't found elsewhere on Brittle Hollow. What if it isn't originally from this planet? Hypothesis, this quantum shard is from the wandering quantum moon. Perhaps it is even a small piece of the moon itself. Of note, a unique signal is coming from this shard. Curiously, our friend the wandering moon sounds the same. I've also heard the same signal this shard produces calling out from Giant's Deep, Timber Hearth, and the Hourglass Twins. Suppose there are other shards like this one. 
Uh, you think that, uh, this is creepy? Listen to this. Yeah. Deal with that. That is the sound of this rock that I'm standing on. The one that goes away when you don't look at it. See, it's over there now. Uh, yeah. I love this game. I really do. It's a lie. Uh, you know, I'm not going to say anything. If you want to find out, you got to stick around. Uh, I think there is supposed to be something here, but this planet is currently breaking apart. Like, literally, this is called Brittle Hollow because pieces that are struck by the uh, moon uh, fall into the black hole beneath me. Oh, that's scary. matter sweet oxygen my favorite ghost <laughs> told you it's dead it's ghost matter well, it's not actually made of ghosts Oh, maybe it is. I don't know. A low observatory. <coughs> A giant steep. Uh, I already read that. So this is what they were explaining about the cyclones and going into the center of Giant's Deep. Kasala's construction yard has been using the cyclones on Giant's Deep to lift orbital probe cannon parts into orbit. But one component was pushed down past the current that usually prevents anything from sinking. Spire and I are crafting a model to determine why this happened. An update. It's now clear there are two different types of cyclones. Most cyclones are giants de rotate clockwise. These are the cyclones Kasala typically uses to send components into orbit. There also exists a rarer type of cyclone that spins the opposite direction and pushes objects beneath the waters and below the current. My gratitude spire, Kanoi is showing me your handiwork and I'm intrigued by this secondary type of cyclone. Why not really necessary to build a model to tell me that? The model will be useful as we continue to monitor Giant Steep. Also, I very much wanted to make a model. Which one are you, Cyclone? Are you up or down?
Lily lives down under you decide. You know what? That's a good point. So this is the observatory where they used it to try to look for the eye of the universe. Uh, that is uh, the Ash Twins. The Hourglass Twins, sorry. This is Timber Hearth. This is Brittle Hollow, where I'm at now. This is Giant's Deep. Uh, this is... Uh... Oh, shit. What is it? Dark Bramble. That's what it was. I don't like it, so I don't tend to remember it. That's Brittle Hollow. And this is the Eye of the Universe. It can't decide where it's at. Kanoi, how should our methods change as we continue our search for the Eye of the Universe? We know what the eye looks like thanks to the quantum moon. So what if we try to find the eye visually instead? Let's send out a probe. We need to build a probe launching mechanism to cover those long distances quickly. A cannon in orbit around a celestial body would circumvent the need to escape gravity's pull. Giant Steep would be a good choice. It's furthest from the sun, so it would provide the best angles for launch. And it's moonless, except when the quantum moon is visiting. Yes, let's build the cannon in orbit around Giant's Deep. Uh, as we couldn't find the eye signal using two different devices built for this exact purpose, we should just continue the search method. Mal's idea is clever, but we have no idea where the eye is in relation to her here. The probability of launching a probe in the correct, that the correct direction would be absurdly small. I believe I have a solution for that problem. Have you spoken with Raimi and Pi about the technology they're developing? So, what if you don't understand? Yeah, I'm here to explain in case you don't understand. The whole point is that they sent, they built a probe launching mechanism in order to find the eye of the universe because both methods that they tried to uh, make in order to find the eye of the universe with sensors didn't work so their option was to look for the planet the eye of the universe uh visually because as you uh, read it's from the moon the only thing is is that uh they didn't have a way of so yeah trial and error I'm here. I did it. I put the ship down safely. Um, and that sh the ship went down. I did sustain bodily harm. A few minor repairs. And it's like the ship never hit those rocks. One of my better attempts. Bellaspar would barely have laughed at me, I bet. That's good. That's the good news. The bad news, I uh, haven't found a way inside the structure yet. The door's broken. And I know I'm not great at exploring, but I think I would have found a different entrance by now if there were one. But probably. I can't get inside from here, but I know there are paths below the surface. I'm going to head north to the ruins on the equator to find a way down. Unfortunately, it's a little late for that. That's not my ship. Uh, yeah, because everything's kind of... Yeah, I don't think there's an equator now. But yeah, uh, they didn't have a method of retrieving the probe once it was launched and they figured that launching it over and over and over again was a waste of time because the probability of finding the eye of the universe which uh they don't know why they can't track it at least by this point we wouldn't know uh because they suspected it, it was quantum quantum moon quantum eye of the universe uh, so 
with it visually, they had the idea to send memories to the past. And that's where kind of things kind of connected. Pro module launches multiple times, retrieves the memory, and so on and so forth. Ow! That hurt. Black hole! Hello? White hole station. Welcome to the White House Station. If you fell through, uh, do I have poke? Uh, we don't know the method they're using in order to send those memories back in time, but uh, we'll get to that eventually. But no, I don't have poke yet. It's like a collector's edition. Trading cards. Uh, every warp tower is tuned to a specific astral body. A tower's warp can only be used during the brief window when the tower is aligned with its corresponding astral body. In this case, Brittle Hollow. Uh, if you see a lot of YouTubers play this, they tend to miss this information. Yes, Cthulhu. If you look up while the station is rotating, you can see the alignment happens when the astral body is directly overhead. You must be standing on the warp platform on the floor during this alignment to be warped. And I'll explain what that means here in a second by showing you. That'll turn things to the side. Now you grab this. Now if you look up, Brittle Hollow's right there. And warp. I am now on Brittle Hollow. I'm back. I'm back, baby. Departure time. 10.22.54303. Arrival time. 10.22.54302. Now, if you look at that, there's a difference. It's not instantaneous. Actually, I arrived before I departed. Return warp status charge. Step onto warp receiver platform to activate return warp. And they actually go through into that. I'll ignore those. Uh, the Hanging City. Oh, hi, Quantum Moon. And bye, Quantum Moon. Uh, I'll come back. Clary. More names. To our friends on Brittle, uh, to our friends on Brittle Hollow, I just warped here from the White Hole Station on the other side of Brittle Hollow's black hole. Our design worked. We've successfully recreated warp travel. I don't know how close it is to Anona's original design, but as long as what we've built works, then I'm delighted. I knew we could do it. Kasava, I hope you're reading this. Uh, this is wonderful news. I can't wait to see the warp tower, although it's been a long time since I've jumped through a black hole. Uh, wait, this can't be correct. Clary, have you seen these readings? If they were accurate, they would violate causality. There must be an equipment error somewhere. So they noticed it too. I'm returning to the White Hole Station. If you and Root meet me there, we can run a full diagnostic and hopefully locate the problem. Poke, don't talk Kasava. White 
black. Warp travel. I need you still. Ash twin project. Alright. No, Amber twin. Yeah. Uh, Rami and I reviewed the records you sent, Poke, and they appear to show Nomai arriving at the warp receiver on Brittle Hollow slightly before departing from the Whitehall station. As I've already told Rami, these measurements can't be accurate. Uh, oh, we have Pi now. Whoops. Sorry, don't listen to me. Uh, as I've already told me, these measurements can't be accurate. How can I know my arrive on Brittle Hollow before he or she ever stepped into the teleporter? The implications would be absurd. I understand it's exceedingly odd, but Clary and I have tested and retested the equipment, and the result is the same every time any someone works. The interval is incredibly minuscule, roughly one hundred thousandths of a second. Do you suppose our instruments can't accurately measure time to such a small degree? Uh, Poke, as Pi is confident the reading is inaccurate, she's kindly helping me attempt to recreate this phenomenon at the high energy lab. I believe I already have, yeah, I have Raimi. We're designing an experiment to take more data. Uh, an update, Poke, the high energy lab is in the canyon on Ember Twins Equator. Come he come here at once, you need to see this. Uh, so Pi told Poke to come. Uh, I don't disagree. I wouldn't mean I've inadvertently broken several fundamental theories regarding this universe. We would have to reconsider all of our beliefs about the nature of time. Yes, I hope so too. Okay, so this is the North Pole. Uh, nope, taking time. Uh, yeah, let's continue with this. I was considering whether I want to or not. Uh, I believe we found everything on Giant's Deep. Uh, so we'll continue on a new page. Uh, brittle. Hollow. We have, this is the North Pole. Teleport station. One body. One near entrance. Uh, one sitting near uh, projection. That's all I need to do. Uh, let's see. I gotta take a look at the projection stuff. Oh. Hello, son. Are you a winning son? Has anyone observed the phantom moon that sometimes greets us in the night sky? Your thoughts interest me. Uh, I compliment your eyes. How do you imagine it disappears? Hypothesis. Could it be a shift in the light spectrum? Suppose this moon is too shy to show us its face. 
I'm interested in your playful mood. Is it much like its violent friend, Hollow's Lantern? This mood isn't volcanic to my unaided eyes. Sometimes it leaves its friend, Hollow Lantern, Hollow's Lantern, for nights at a time. Imagine if there were two volcanic moons. Then I uh, uh, hypothesis: there can't exist too much lava. I strongly prefer we test that null hypothesis. Then I imagine there'd be none of us left. Uh, the nights the moon circles this planet appear random. It seems to travel as it likes. Now here's a secret. Uh, hold on, I don't remember the secret. Okay, it's not at this end. It was at the other end. Ah, it's fine. Dead tree. Tree? No, dead tree. Sweet. Oxygen. I'll have to come back anyway. But, uh, folk, I feel strange. Trying to recreate. Uh oh. Trying to recreate and own as or without him at times. It still feels strange to no longer be his very young apprentice. So, Poke was a known as apprentice. Well, I can just sit here, make a note. Uh, let's see. Apprentice to Anona. Oh, I'm about to die. Uh, very apprentice, and for the Black Coal Forge to be in my care and not his. Hypothesis This will always feel strange. Even though my time with him was short, I miss my old mentor and deeply. Yep, the sun. To have the chance to try it is thrilling, but I don't want to disappoint everyone. I think I can do this, probably. But what if excitement has caused my assessment of my own abilities? I was wrong to volunteer to build it. I was born in the star system. I never saw Unnoticed work before with my own three eyes. I only know what he taught me. What if I've bitten off a larger portion than I can consume? Still, all I can give is my best, and as Anona would say, should my best prove insufficient, then we will find another way to achieve what's needed. I have Clary at root in the forge, and I have my clan, and I am not alone. Pause. Uh, Clary and root. I don't have. I have Clary. I don't have root. See, I can control time too. I can stop your death whenever I feel like it. But we're gonna continue. Embrace it! Very good. I think we're all into here. Uh, been a good three hours. Uh, this creates a little bit of a cliffhanger. Uh, 
Uh, what did you think, Ryan? Cyclone? Thank you. Well, uh, I don't know if I want to continue with Scott Pilgrim at this point. I might come back a little bit later. I'm feeling a little board gamey. Uh, the sun exploded. That's what happened. Yeah, I feel like I want to play a board game on tabletop. You know why the sun exploded. But yeah, uh, I'll continue this uh, tonight. I'll play, uh, I will play this to its fullest. Um... Uh, if you, here, um, I don't, I, I've tried making a Discord server, but I don't know how to make it repeat, if you know what I mean. But what I can do is give you an invite. Not everyone has, uh used it I have a couple people but uh, nothing serious yeah if you want you can join my discord and I'll this time uh, I don't usually post it when I'm post when I'm uh, putting in a time for when I stream but uh, if I get enough people in there I'll do that Oh, toxic. Wait, Ryan, are you toxic? Or is that someone else? <laughs> oh, all right. I thought I was talking to someone I didn't know. That's fine. But yeah, I'll uh put in when I'm streaming. Cyclone, did you just join and then immediately leave? What's wrong with you? Extremely rude. Or did you just hide yourself? Well, anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the stream for now. Uh, the next stream will be playing uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Uh, so I'll see you guys then. Have a good day, everybody.